cotton. We don't have too many ships in Singapore to produce cotton. <laughs> uh, but sir, uh, Singapore got no ship, but that day I found this one on the floor. Is this one cotton? Let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now there's so many plants and animals. <laughs> So this right here is a fruit from a tree that you can find in different places in Singapore and this is called kapok or white silk cotton. Now although this is a kind of cotton, it is not exactly the same type of fibre that is used to make your clothes. Your common cotton material is actually a natural fibre from gossypium plants and these are shrubs that grow about 1 to 2 metres tall. Kapok trees on the other hand is a fast growing species that can reach a height of 18 to 30 to even 70 metres. Although found in Singapore, the kapok tree or Saba pentandra actually originates from Central and South America. But today, they are also found in West Africa and Southeast Asia, with the latter mostly importing it over for cultivation. In Singapore, our first kapok tree was planted in 1933 by Eric Holtham, a former director of the Singapore Botanic Gardens. And although that original tree has since been removed due to damage from a storm, there are still many other kapok trees around, and seven of them are even listed as heritage trees like this one behind me at Bradle Road. And as you can see, I'm squatting between these huge roots of the kapok tree, and these roots are called buttress roots. And they're such huge structures because they are important to help support and stabilise large trees just like the kapok to prevent it from toppling over. And being tall is crucial for this tree because that is where the wind is. You see, different plants have different ways of dispersing their seeds, and you're probably very familiar with the idea of plants producing fleshy and tasty fruits so as to attract animals to eat them up and subsequently spread their seeds. But for the kapok tree, they rely on the wind. So the cotton fibres in these pots are attached to the seeds of the kapok tree and because they are super lightweight and stringy, it is very easy for them to catch on and be carried off by air currents. And in order to be exposed to as much wind as possible, many of these wind dispersed trees have evolved to grow very tall so as to stick out from their neighbours that would have blocked their wind. And when you have more wind, all this light fibrous cotton will be able to drift off as far and wide as possible. Now this is important when you don't want your babies to compete for nutrients with each other because of overcrowding. Or even worse, by competing with the parent tree, especially when mature adult plants have a stronger capability of absorbing nutrients and water. So that is why seed dispersal is considered very important in ensuring seedling survival. But that aside, we are humans, right? So we should ask, how is this kapok silk cotton actually useful for us? Although, unlike your regular gossypium cotton, the kapok fibre is too short and fragile for weaving, so you can't really spin it into a thread to make shirts. But humans are creative creatures. Starting from the relatively ancient times, native tribes along the Amazon River actually used kapok as a seal for their blowgun darts. And the cotton is used to create pressure so that it can help shoot the darts out from the tubes. But as time passed, we have found many other innovative ways of stuffing this kapok into many different places. Because you see, kapok is not only light and fluffy, but this material is naturally encased in a water-resistant wax, which actually makes it amazingly buoyant. So buoyant that it can support about 30 times its weight afloat in water. So traditionally, kapok was harvested for its use in life jackets. The waxiness of kapok also makes it flexible to shape around, which is why it was used to stuff pillows, mattresses and sleeping bags. However, in modern times, synthetic materials have replaced the kapok in stuffing these items. But there are still places that sell kapok goods, especially for a market that would prefer a more naturally biodegradable stuffing. But this doesn't mean that you should pick up the cotton off the ground so that you can go and stuff your pillows. Ah. These cotton rode the winds just to carry their seeds across the land in hopes of making new trees. So let's just leave these ingenious creations of Mother Nature be and let it do its thing. And that is all we have for today's episode. As usual, I've got some reads and links down in the description if you want to learn more about the Kapo tree. Now don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram and all those fancy stuff and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thank you for watching and once again, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle out. Who there? Okay, bye.